Hey everybody, Ben here from Cinema Studios, and today I want to talk about comparing yourself with other artists. When is it good, and when is it toxic? Stick around. So every artist, of every skill level, is going to sort of naturally compare their work and their process with other artists. Now this isn't always a bad thing, but at a certain point, when you're doing it, it should never feel crippling. It should never feel like, God, they're so good. Just why do I even bother? So I'm hoping this video will act as a guide to help you avoid those pitfalls in your creative growth and development. So let's start with when it's good to compare yourself with others. There's a few different variables here. First, if you're comparing yourself with somebody who's either at or maybe just above your current skill level. In that way, you can rather really learn from them and learn from what they're doing because their techniques and their work is going to be really similar to yours. In that same way, it's kind of good to maybe, these are the artists you could become friends with because you can kind of build those connections and grow together. And in growing together, one thing that is kind of important is that you can find each other's blind spots sometimes. Uh, being able to look at another artist's work that's very similar to yours and that maybe you're on a good uh, sort of relationship with, you can say, hey, I see what you're doing there, and I think you're maybe struggling with this little section here. So, so getting that little bit of an outside perspective can make you go, oh, geez, that's what I've been there's a block and, and now you've got it, thanks. Now when you compare your work to somebody who is much better than you, whether that be an old master or just somebody who's been doing it a lot longer, there's actually some really good value in that. Uh, I love finding artists that just allow me to explore and find new techniques with. Uh, this is something especially I did in, uh, when I was in college because I would find these artists like, this is cool and at, at that time I was finding a lot of YouTube artists that was like, I'm exploring and finding new techniques in order to better my own work. And in that betterment, you get that inspiration to keep going, to keep trying new things, and, and to try new and different things. Another thing with artists that are better than you, especially now artists online, is that you can't be afraid to ask how something is done, because a lot of times artists want to tell you how they did it. Uh, you're not going to find a lot of artists that are like, well, that's just a trade secret. Most people, those artists don't really build communities. I, there were several artists that I was just like, I think when I learned how to wire a canvas, I was like, I've been trying to figure out how to do this forever. It's like, oh, you just put a screw on. He actually like sent a picture. It's like, here, this is how I do it. I was like, wow, thanks, awesome. And it's like, just having that little bit of an open line of communication for, for those artists is like, just, hey, like, how did you do this? And that's awesome to be able to, to look at a work, uh, look at a, a, or a technique or something, and then have that direct line where you can just be like, yeah, keep going, try it out, you know, try it for yourself. And it's, that's, that's an inspiring thing. Now, if you compare your work to someone who is, for lack of a better term, way worse than you, uh, maybe somebody who's just not at that skill level yet, a few years back in terms of uh, their learning, it's not always a bad thing to do that because you can kind of look at their work and maybe find something you missed. There's something really unique about uh, specifically beginner artwork because there's something about not really knowing what you're doing that kind of lets you just explore ideas and, and pa creative paths that you may not uh, otherwise do. When I look back at my old sketchbooks I see tons of stuff. I, mean, I didn't start really exclusively doing landscapes until like college-ish. I mean I ex expanded my horizons a ton especially in high school doing like I was doing figure stuff, I was doing comics, I was doing all kind of different types of art and surrealism and just crazy stuff. So stuff that I generally just don't really do anymore. But it was fun to kind of go down that path and go down that avenues. And when you start looking at uh, work that is maybe not at your level, maybe it is that sort of like subpar, uh, at least in your mind, you kind of look and go, you know, maybe there's something here. Maybe there's something I missed. And, and there's something in that raw, like untapped creativity that you can go, there's an idea here. It doesn't look real great. But there's a really good idea here, and I'm actually kind of inspired by it. So as I mentioned in the beginning, there is sort of a level of toxicity to this. When you start comparing yourself to other artists, with all the good things that can come about it, there's some bad things too. Now when it's coming to, again, an artist who is at your level, or maybe just above it, or just below it, like there's that little bit of a, uh, of like a wiggle room gap in there, you may not always need that distraction. You might look at something and say, yeah, this is cool and things, and this is sort of the thing is when you're online, specifically on sites like DeviantArt or Instagram, 
it's easy to just kind of keep scrolling and just keep scrolling and just keep scrolling. And at that point, you're scrolling, and you're looking at art, and that's great for inspiration, but you're not working at that point. You're just sitting there and scrolling and looking through stuff and browsing images. So not always the best thing to do. Also, it's kind of easy to look at somebody who's, again, at your sort of skill level, but maybe it takes a little, maybe less time to finish something than, than you do. And you're like, well, if it took them less time, I don't need to be spending all this time working on something. Or maybe it took the, them more time. Oh, well, I, I can definitely get something done in less time, so, you know, why bother, you know? Another thing, as I sort of mentioned at the beginning of this video, is that looking at a, an artist's work who's way, way, way better than you, the, there's a lot of artists, especially uh, a lot of growing artists, that just feel totally crippled by this. They, they see their success and they just go, I will never, ever be able to get this good, no matter how hard I try. And it's, it's, it's a very, very toxic mentality to get yourself into it. I know, I get it. I, sometimes I'll, I will see something, I'm like, oh man, like, jeez. How? There's no way. There's no way you did that. No way. But, again, it's a matter of years and years of practice and dedication. That mentality, if you let it kind of really build in your head and sort of fester into something horrible, that's one of those things that actually can make a lot of good artists stop working. And that's really a shame because it's not something that you can get yourself into and, and keep yourself into in that way. One way I suggest definitely trying to avoid this is just loving the process. Now I talked about this a little bit a couple weeks back in How to Be an Artist Part 9 uh, about how much how important it is to just love the process of getting there, not so much loving the result of what you're making. Uh, and if you can do that, then I can guarantee you uh, the idea of they're so better I shouldn't even try, that mentality will never cross your mind again. And the final toxic moment is when you Look at artists who are not as good as you, who are worse, as I said. Again, don't really want to say that. Those are the ones that aren't as skilled. If you do this often, you're probably doing it for one of two reasons. One, because you're afraid to move forward. Uh, and that's really a, a difficult thing. If you're always looking back and looking back and looking back at old, old, either your old work or someone else's old work, you're never really going to be able to push further. You're never going to be able to push into those new ideas that you would get from maybe artists who are better than you or the old masters or something like that. The other really bad thing to do here is to look at that artwork and say, wow, I'm way better than this person. And you use it as a bad sort of way to boost your confidence. Taking delight in that, just being like, they suck, I'm better, that's just a crappy thing to do personality-wise. Don't do that in art or in real life. That's just horrible. And, and it's like, don't use their lack of experience as a way to promote your own success, because that's just sad. Okay, so we've talked a lot about the two sides, but let's talk about building that balance and take a quick little review and recap of all this. If you're looking at people's art that's above you, be inspired by it, but not crippled by it. Use it as motivation to keep working. If you're looking at someone's art that's below your level, find what they do well and encourage them to keep working. Uh, don't be a troll that's just like, wow, you suck. No. Use it as a way to be like, wow, you've got, you're onto something here. And when you build that level of lifting them up, they might come to you as for looking for favors later, just the way you're probably looking for artists to look up to and look for advice from them. It's just a big chain of a cycle. It's important when comparing your work that you're not comparing apples and oranges or even like apples and steak. If I'm making landscapes, and I find someone who's sort of at my same skill level, but they do figure painting, it's like, well, that's not the same thing. Like, you can't really compare yourself to another artist when you don't do that subject matter or you don't use those techniques. So it's like, well, yeah, their stuff's different and maybe a little better because their entire mental process for working is just different. And finally, spend more time working than looking at art. So spend more time in your studio. Spend more time painting than looking at other art. Because, well, yes, looking at other art is great. It's great for inspiration. But step away from your computer screen. Go into your studio and work. Uh, the more time you spend in front of a screen just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, chances are the more depressed you're going to feel. Get in the studio and work. Don't just sit there and scroll through other people's stuff. So what about you guys? Do you Are you stuck in these toxic pitfalls? Or have you overcome this and you want to share some advice of your own? If you have anything to say, leave that in comments below. Consider supporting on Patreon if you're able to. Hit that like button. Get subscribed if not already. And this has been from Center Block Studios, and I will see you guys next time.
Also, if you guys haven't checked it out yet and you do want to scroll through some art, check uh, the description box below for my Instagram account. I opened it up <coughs> a couple weeks back. Really kind of enjoying the platform so far. I'm not posting finished art, but I've got a lot of sort of in-progress studio stuff. Just some weird wacky studio stuff as well as just some photographs I've been taking. So be sure to check that out as well. Okay, I gotta not bend my knees because this is this hurts a little. <laughs>